All right, this is Forex Fridays with Deontay. Uh, welcome to October. The year is flying by very fast. Do not blink. It is almost 2025. 2024 is soon going to come to an end. We're going to do our weekly range review. We're going to recap the DXY and GJ. We're going to go through some of my models, right? Very simple models. We'll go through everything. Then we'll get into October's daily update and what pair we're tracking, how we got to that pair, right? How we filtered out why we selected this pair for October. We're going to go through the macros, meaning seasonal, the interest rate differentials, the IPTA look back and cast forward. We're going to look at all those things and explain a few things that some people might need more clarification on. So thank you guys for coming out tonight and let's get right to it. So first and foremost, as always, I like to keep it this way and keep organized and consistent i like to teach people when it comes to trading the weekly candle or a new week that you're about to head into or if you had to study a previous week this is how i would break it down i would go on an hourly chart i would then open up all the dividers for the day sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and then i would open the opening price for the week and draw it all the way out. Now, this price point here is fair value. It's a Sunday's opening price or interchangeably weekly opening price. Anything above that in a premium is where you're going to find ideal sell scenarios. I say this all the time. Anything that's in the discount, that's where you're going to find your ideal buy scenario. So just looking at the chart with the hindsight that we see, right? This is NFP week. A lot of challenging um, price action, especially around Wednesday. A lot of people had difficulties on Wednesday. I had difficulties on Wednesday, right? It's not a, a day that you should want to trade during NFP. We can see the low of the week happened to be Monday. Look at how it's below the weekly opening price and a discount, and there's a buying opportunity that pushes all the way up into NFP Friday. Incredible. Two opposite ends there. We're going to go through the New York model and the London model here. But again, look at where the best buy is occurring and where the best sellers occur. We're going to talk about Monday and Tuesday for this week. So let's go down to the 15-minute time frame and just before 2 a.m. This is the DXY. Now, I know not everybody can trade the DXY, depending on their broker or prop firm, but for those that do follow it as a confluence, right, as your intermarket analysis, when you're seeing certain things happen on the DXY, it's most likely either happening on correlated pairs or opposite on inversely correlated pairs. So the London model has a range that we are looking at before the session even starts. And that's going to be from midnight to 2 a.m. And then the London session itself that I like to use, right, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. Now, if you're versed in ICT material... This is not nothing new. Now, the dead zone, though, I don't see a lot of people talk about it in the community as much. So I'm trying my best to get it out there and expose people to it. This is where you're most likely going to find consolidation. Not all the time, right? In this example, there's not clear consolidation. But this time period, this specific moment in time is where I like to frame liquidity pools. So let's play it forward. So we have buy side and sell side. Right here is the lowest low or double bottom. That's sell side liquidity pool right there. This swing high is buy side liquidity pool. A swing high formation is simply a candle between two other candles. That has a lower high on the left and a lower high on the right. If you don't understand what I just said, just replay the video when you watch it on YouTube. I'm going to take the highest high of that session as well. I'm going to consider that buy side as well. Now we have the opening price here of London, 2 a.m. opening price. That's what I'm using, 2 a.m. Well, LOP, right? London opening price. Now, I'm just going to engage the chat, right? Anything above this opening price is what? Premium or discount? Anybody can answer. Premium. Thank you. Appreciate the answer. Thank you for engaging with the chat and engaging with me. Right? That's premium. 
this is where our ideal sell scenarios should be occurring. And then down here, if that's premium, this would have to be discount, right? Just fill in the blank. Do not forget, though, simultaneously, at the same time, there is that weekly opening price as well that the algorithm has in mind. Right? It's not like the algorithm forgot where the opening price is for the candle for the week. It knows where it's at. It always knows where it is and where it isn't. It's very crucial. Same thing here, London opening price. Now we also have another confluence as well because you have true day opening price, which is the highest high of this session with that dead zone. I'm going to call that MOP, midnight opening price, or true day open, if the true day open. The same thing applies. Premium discount. Many times you'll see the market give double confluences or triple confluences for this model. And not to confuse anyone, 2 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. That's the dead zone. That's, that's the Asian lunch. If I said London lunch, I was incorrect. It's Asian lunch. It's right after the Asian session. That's the London session there. Let's play it forward and see what happens. Price comes down and does what? Takes out sell side. Takes out sell side of the liquidity pool and rated that one side of the market. Why did my music stop? Whatever. Now price is in a discount. This is where ideal buy conditions is going to occur. We're most likely going to see the market find buying opportunities here, especially since it's in a triple confluence because it's below the true day open at midnight. It's below Sunday's opening price or the weekly opening price here. And it's also below the kill zones opening price. So you have an opportunity to get a very cheap buy opportunity because remember, it's ideal for you as the buyer to buy lower. You don't want to be buying in a premium. There's no reason why you should necessarily want to aim to buy in a premium unless you're looking for a mitigation. That's the only time you'd probably look to buy in a premium. Other than that, you're probably looking for some type of breaker scenario or a rate on sell side and price pushing back up into a premium, leaving a discount. Let's go on the one minute time frame because now what we have left is buy side liquidity pool. We have this up here and this up here still. Price just rated this. And this is how I like to consider it. We just took this out. Bang. Then this now becomes the draw. We're looking at these as the draw now. These are possible, possibility, possibility, you can't even speak, possibilities of draws to the upside. I want to see price get back up there. Let's go down the one minute time frame because this is where the entry is very crucial. Right, we're stalking something very specific. So everything that we just saw on the 15-minute chart is now transcribed to the one-minute chart. This is how I'm able to get lower time from entries without stressing too much. This is how I dial in the entry, what I'm looking for very specifically. It's got to be a fair value gap that runs through a swing high. It's got to be some type of breaker or mitigation theory. That's all we're looking for after rating sell side. Let's play it forward. And price keeps dropping. This entire time, we're not looking for the buy. Most people would say, well, Deontay, you should be chasing the short. But let's say I'm not looking for the shorts because of my model. Based on my model, my steps, I should be looking for longs because of what happened. Sell side was taken out first going into the London session. We're below the London session's opening price. Let's keep playing it forward. And we're waiting for the entry. This entire time, we're waiting. We're stalking for this entry to go long. And we can see right here, this is our entry. 
There goes that fair value gap. There goes that swing high. It's my quickest way to identify it and explain it to somebody, right? To keep, get them up to speed of what we're talking about. That's the entry idea. It always looks like that. Now, there's similar ideas that look just like it. Sometimes the swing high is right on the start of the fair value gap. I don't like those ones. It's my personal take. And sometimes the swing high is right at the end of the fair value gap. I don't personally take those either. But there are many times where I see those other formations play out and price still gives a respectable trade idea. It's up to you to pick which one you would like. like. This is the one I prefer. I'm showing it the way I do it, how Deontay does it. So the idea is that I would go long here at the top of that fair value gap, the premium side of that fair value gap, not the discount side, not the bottom side or the starting point. I'm going at the ending point right here at the bottom of that candle, the low of that candle. That's where I'm going long. And this is, I believe, a 15 for 15. If I have it set up right, yeah. 15 for 15. That's a one-to-one -one scenario right there. And it's happening where? All the way at the end, almost at the last couple of minutes of the session, of the kill zone. Put in the session indicator. Right, that's the dead zone. And there goes your London session there. See that? That's where we look to go long. I'm trying to trade inside the kill zone. Sometimes the kill, the the entry happens very early, but you got to be there. You got to be attentive. You got to be paying attention. You can't be distracted because you'll miss the entry sometimes. It'll happen very early in the session. It'll happen midway in the session, or it happen at the end. Right? You'll have to have some real discipline to sit here throughout the session and wait for this idea. Some people give up and say, "Oh, it's taking too long to happen," but this is how we separate ourselves from better traders. And we go into some drawdown, which is expected. That's why we have a stop loss. People are so hypercritical. Oh, but you're in drawdown. Yes, we know we're in drawdown. That's the whole point of why we use a, a stop loss. We know that at some point, the entry that we may take may not be the exact turning point to push us right into profit. But we see many times where we do get an entry and it's the exact turning point, and we get little to no drawdown because of how close we're dialing in the area where we want to go along or where the algorithm should start to gauge and change directions. And as you can see, price trades up into profit, going all the way into the New York session as well. So keep this trade in mind, right? This is definitely a successful trade. At this point, you got more than 80% of the trade done. You should be paying the trader. It doesn't have to hit your final TP for you to be like, oh, uh, should I close out or, or should I just leave a runner? No, pay the trader. You waited. Remember, imagine you were the one that actually took the trade. I know it's hindsight, but imagine you stood up and watched and went through this entire model and waited for the triple confluence buy for the DXY. And you waited to the last second, right? All the way to the end where most folks would have might have gave up already. They might have went back to bed. They might have been, ah, forget London. It's not doing nothing. But you stayed all the way to the end. You got to pay yourself. Because imagine price goes all the way up here. It gets really close to your TP, but never triggers your TP order. Never triggers it to take you out. And then it turns around and stops you out. You would be upset. So do yourself a favor. Let's look at the New York model that also formed here on this day too. So pull this back here. Get this out the way. The same thing that we do for the London model is the same thing we do for the New York session. The only thing that is different is the dead zone. That's the only thing that we're changing here. We're not changing much. We're just changing what is actually occurring and when it's occurring. Let's go on a 15-minute chart. See how we took out one side of the market? It pulls traders, right? It's inducing traders, convincing traders, yo, I should go short. Traders like to chase price action. Or maybe some traders are actually correct on this short short term. Right? They, they might be scalping. They're getting a small opportunity to some type of level to the downside. Kudos to those traders, right? But we're not talking about those traders. We're talking about traders that are using this idea and going through this thought process the way I like to do it. I know many people may go about it a different way. Not disagreeing with you guys, but this is how I like to teach traders because it's very simple. It's not confusing. It's not a lot on the chart. It gets straight to the point. Now we're going to be looking at 
if I can move this over. Everything, everything. Go, 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 go. I don't even need this anymore. Another dead zone. We're doing the same thing. Find sell side. This is the lowest low. Find buy side. That's the that's the highest high as well, but it's also swing high. So we're definitely marking it off. Anything else is not buy side and sell side. None of these levels in between. That's the buy side. That's the sell side. That's it. Buy side, sell side. You got the opening price of the New York session. Same thing applies. Anything above it is a premium. Anything below it is a discount. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, trading view. Work with me. Work with me. Sometimes trading view can be very annoying. Like, see how I want to click this thing? I want to drag it. It's not going to let me click it. It's going to click the, the arrow and make me enlarge it. So silly. Still appreciate the, the the platform, but some things irks me as a user. Let's go to one minute time frame. Actually, let's wait. Let's go. Let's stay on the fifteen minute chart. Let's see what happens. You see here, this is also a fifteen minute swing low. Right, it, for, it still forms exactly on seven a.m. So I'm going to consider that one, two, three. Still a swing low. So it also rated that that sell side. One, two, three, price runs that out, play it forward. Take a look on the one minute time frame and see what's happening here. And you can see this is the point where it runs south side at that level there. That's 715 candle. Play it down. And we're waiting for that same entry idea. Now, this is one that some people may want to discuss because here this is a fair value gap with a volume imbalance too. So there's like two PDA rays stacking it. Also in the order block too, down close candle too. So you got the fair value gap. This candle's low to this candle's high. And then you got in between that, look at this, that space in between. I said if you're versed in ICT, you know these PDA rays. We'll make it purple. You got the volume imbalance. This is an entry for me. This could this is also an entry, but there's another one that forms. So this is the, since this is the first one that forms, we'll mark this off. And that's the idea. That's that triple confluence idea again. It's happening where? Below the New York opening price. These are two different sessions now that we're talking about here. Two different sessions. And, and strangely, oddly enough, the entries are happening pretty similar. In the same level. Coincidence? Probably not, but I'm not going to try to read into that too much. Now let's play it forward. Let's play it all the way forward. All right, we leave a discount and look at where we're aiming for. Bang. Right back up there. Because we broke this and went back to target this. London, New York. Same idea, same principle. Play it forward. And look at that. The London trade idea finally hits that final TP level. It finally gets back up to that draw on liquidity over here. You see that? It, it gets there. and also gets to the last one too. I'm not saying it's going to get to all projected levels that you want marked up on the chart. That's why you got to pay the trader. This is just a fantastic picture-perfect example that we're going over. It may not be like that with every period every day that you're trading, but there are many times where you'll be able to get at least 10, maybe 12, maybe 20 pips, maybe 15, 30, so on and so forth out of the market. And it runs right back up into what? Midnight opening price. Look at that. This is the entire day. The entire day. Look at where all the best buys are happening for the day. Below the dis below. Of course, take the whole line with you. Here we go. Below and a discount. It runs up into Sunday's opening price right there. 
this was a fantastic training day. It was a Monday too. It was a Monday. That was absolutely nice. Let's go back on the 15 minute chart. All right, and that's not even going into the new month yet. That's the last day of the month going into um October. Right? Yeah. So let's take a look at Tuesday now. New York model. Play it all the way over there. And look how further this trade runs on. That one idea. Some of these ideas that we talk about are one shot, one kill ideas. And then we got where's price currently now going into Tuesday above the weekly opening price. So my mind mainly will be concerned about any sells. Not to say this market can't continue trending up because it can. It could continue trending. And we saw that it trended up all the way up to Friday. But could there also still be selling opportunities in an uptrend? Absolutely. How do we look for it? We look for it during the kill zones. We look for it in a premium territory. Via weekly, via day, and via kill zone. Fifteen minute chart. Swing low. That's that sell side. Nope. This one's the buy side. That's higher. That's the buy side. And you can see going into the session, it already midway, right around eight o'clock, it ran buy side above the New York open. So bang, we also have sell side down here that just forms right there. Still a swing low, so I'm taking that. That's an idea. Now these become the targets. This is one, this is two. We're also above midnight opening price for the day. MOP. Nice. This is all you're waiting for. You're waiting for time and price to align. You're not forcing these trades. You're letting price do what it has to do. It's not like Deontay comes to the chart and I'm like, yeah, I want to force a sell on UJ tonight on Asian session. No, I'm not forcing it. I'm, I'm literally allowing the market to guide me to what it wants to give it to me. Right? It wants to give me a premium condition. Cool. We're in a premium condition. Can I find a sell opportunity? Possibly. It's an opportunity. No one said it's a guaranteed success. It's not guaranteed that this sell opportunity, just because we're above the weekly, just because we're above midnight opening price, just because we're above New York opening price, or even London's opening price for Tuesday, doesn't mean the sell is guaranteed. Could we argue a sell is possible? Yes, we could debate that all day. Because of fundamentals, we're just overbrought. That's it. From that perspective, we're overbrought. So we could lean for a sell. So let's look at that. Let's go on the one minute time frame. This is where buy side is rated. Let's look for an entry idea. All right. So this is right when it gets rated. From here on, we're gonna this is where you should start stalking. Right. If you're watching this live, you're doing it, right? This is what you, you start stalking on the one minute now because it broke the you have an alert that sets off. Right, that's how I do it at least. I have an alert that sets off. I'm like, okay, cool. Buy side triggered. All right, now we're set, we're set to rock. Now we're gonna look. We're looking for any sometimes it's the very first fair value gap that forms. There's one up here, but let's just keep it simple tonight. We're looking for the fair value gap that has a swing point through it, or a fair value gap that runs through a swing point. Now this looks like it. This looks like it is, but it's not. See that? Yeah, this one, the fair value gap, the swing low is not even in the fair value gap or even at the start or end of it. It looks very similar to what we showed for the long idea, just opposite and upside down. But this is not the entry. Let's keep playing it forward. Let's get rid of this. All right, keep playing it. We keep playing it. And watch it. Look at how price is respecting that New York opening price, too. You see that? Because the thing is no joke. 
Just keep playing it. I still don't see the entry. Nothing yet. Still playing it. And, and there we go. Right here. That's the entry. I see entry ideas right here. There. Just double checking my eyes too, because sometimes I miss it too. Going through these examples. Double checking, just double checking. Looking, looking, looking. So volume imbalance, not a fit right gap. Okay. This is where we look to go short. Right, looking for price to return back into the bottom of that fair value gap to go short in that triple confluence idea. Possibly to draw down to this. Right, our, our target is close to it. Who knows? But this is what we're aiming for. Nothing a lot from out, out the market. We're triggered in short there. We look to hold. There's some drawdown. We don't care about the drawdown because we're risking properly. And TP hit. TP hit. Do you see that? Again, I did not force the sell idea right i know it's hindsight we're going through it together but we show these models and these examples for the last 10 months right my i turned 26 october 12 next saturday i've been showing it for the last 10 months pretty much the same model over and over and over and over that's why i love the consistency i'm not going to come here and try and change anything up and show you guys anything different because it works you just got to be able to manage the risk management, manage the equity. That's all you're trying to do. Again, like I said before, nothing is guaranteed. This sell could not have been guaranteed. It was an ideal sell condition, but it could have still failed. Nothing is 100% guaranteed. There was probably a percentage that this trade idea could have failed. And it wasn't just going to align and give me the win. It happened to still play out well. It gave us drawdown for this one. Every trade is not the same. It gave us little to no drawdown for a second. It looked like, oh, everything was going to hit TP really quick. But then it turned around real quickly again, and then it fell back down. It was psychologically, you know, shake, shake a trader out there, rookie trader out of their trade. But look at that reaction. Though. That was so cool. Look at that reaction around New York Open. Just spikes right into it and turns around. Runs some type of buy side one more time and then drops. That was just awesome. What a great trade. And this is the DXY too. The same thing we show the currencies. And you guys will see that. So that was a New York model idea in a triple confluence situation. So you see, this is the New York Open. That's midnight. This is all Tuesday's day. This is Tuesday. Don't be confused. This is not Monday. This is Tuesday. Yes, we're looking at a one-minute entry idea. I know it's crazy how we could dial in some of these ideas. How close we are to the truth. I'm not guaranteeing it's the truth, but it's very close to it. I know it's closer to than what most folks are putting out there. And then we're Sunday's opening price. Down here too. If you get a nice little zoom out on that. So you can see. You see that? Look at that weekly open. Look at where we caught that sell. That was nice. Let's move on now to GJ. If there are any questions about what we just went over, Please let me know because I'm going to speed this up a little bit because we're going to do the same thing again. Now we're just looking at a currency pair. If there's any questions, any concerns, where are you looking at the opening price? What's the opening price? What's the opening price for the kill zone? If there's any little thing, do not feel silly. Do not feel like your question is not big enough. Let me know because there are a lot of things I didn't know. I had to ask questions. I had to study. No way, I didn't mark this up. I could have sworn I marked this up. That's crazy. No way. It was NJ, I did it. Sorry, NJ. Correction. I'm doing that NJ. I was like, I, I was like, GJ. All right. Got a couple Asian models here, so we could take a look, right? We don't normally do the Asian model on Forex Fridays, but we're doing it here. And normally you guys look at the Asian model with UJ with me. I'm showing it with another pair. It's just a yen cross. So take a look at how this market played out. Let's take off all the session indicators. The only indicator I use is just the highlight time. I don't use any indicator. I don't. My, my belief system 
is no point of doing it because price action already gives you everything you need. The indicator is not going to point out anything more fancy in the price action than you yourself and the price itself. All right. So we've got the weekly opening price, Sunday's opening price right there, right? 90 101. That's the opening price. We got our premium and discount levels. Just look at where price is buying and where price is selling for the week. This weekly candle that we're talking about, this up candle right here. Get it transcribed on a daily chart, right? From Monday, September the 30th, all the way to now. I look at it on the hourly chart. That's it. That's your weekly candle. It start it opened here and and closed up here. That's the close of the weekly candle right down there. The high of the weekly candle was on Wednesday. Wednesday. That was nice. Let's take a look at the Asian session model on Monday. Let's look at that. Right. All the models are the same. Literally the same. The only thing that's changing, Deontay, I need to check the trend first because last week UJ did not give much opportunity. So how to check trend before Asian or New New York session? It's a great question. I have a I have a three part series on YouTube already that talks about how to find the daily bias, and there are some Larry William ideas as well called smash candles. We'll get into that a little bit later into the video when we start talking higher time frame and daily chart. But I already have a YouTube a video series talking about how to find trend and how to find momentum and continuations on the daily chart. So take a look at that. But we'll go over it tonight too as well. But that video, the way I have it structurally, educationally, it's really good, clean and concise uh, for you to learn. But we'll still get through it tonight. Great question. All right. So Asian session model, 12 p.m., to 8 p.m. And then Asian session is 8 p.m. to midnight. So this is what I call the New York lunch. It's more of the longer extended periods. I know some people would say, oh, it's central bank dealers range, you know, Asian session, um, standard deviations like that, flout, et cetera, et cetera. I don't use standard deviations anymore. I used to, but it just felt like I didn't really need it in my model. There's not so many things I really need to incorporate. Sometimes you just got to cut the fat off and get to what you tr what truly works for you. And this is what I found that works for me and my lifestyle. I mainly trade the Asian session and the New York session, mainly Asian session. New York session, if I have time, if I'm not leaving the house to go do something. Um, but Asian session, at the end of the day, I could come home, still get some some trades in for the week. Intraday, at least. So we're looking for buy side and sell side again prior to the kill zone at sell side. And you can see buy side immediately ran going into 8 p.m. right there. Bang. So since we hit that, that means my eye is going to go, uh-oh, we're probably going to look to probably target this. That would be my main goal. Very simple goal. And we can see the market's kind of consolidating, right? It's kind of range bound. It's not really making significant highs or significant lows. So that's why I don't trade in these dead period zones. So anywhere you see in the chart, you see that's gray. You're going to most likely see consolidation. Those are your dead zones right before the kill zones. I have a video that talks about the Asian session uh, indicator or the sessions indicator. There's a whole video how to set it up, stuff like that. If you want to know the name of the indicator, it is... This one right here, FXN Asian Session Range by Rob Minty. This is the one. I'm not sure if it's still up there, but I have it favorited, and I've been using it ever since. I like the way it hugs the candles, and it's very clean. I used to use another one, but this is the one I like to use. This is 8 p.m. Come on, trading view, right? Asian Session open. Leave it as that. Anything above this price point is a premium. Anything below this is a discount. Now we're also above Sunday's opening price. We see that? Absolutely. We're above the weekly opening price. So we're in a double confluence premium. Now for the day too, right? Because technically this Asian session, the way we have it set up, it looks like it's a part of Monday or the Monday's Asian session. But this Asian session is actually included on Tuesday's daily candle. Please do not get confused. 
Uh, I can't answer this call right now. Remind me later. Leave a message. Sorry, I can't talk right now. So this Asian session, right? Don't get confused. This Asian session is actually included in Tuesday's daily candle because the daily candle technically starts at 5 p.m. But if you're going off of ICT, true day open, we're going to say uh, midnight opening prices where the algorithm resets is midnight opening price premium and discount levels. So this is would be midnight opening price. Got that. So right now, price is in a triple confluence premium overbought condition for the Asian session. And it just ran buy side liquidity. Just to go back to your question as well, Tech, right? Sometimes the models don't necessarily need a lot of confirmation on daily bias. Most times than not, the market is naturally going to give you the pathway or the journey that it wants to go. So it's not like you can force this. Normally, when I trade the Asian session, I don't even look for the triple confluence idea. So what I'm showing you right now, many of you guys know, when I talk about the Asian session, you hardly hear me talk about triple confluence. I'm just here pointing it out because it can play a role. But many times I don't incorporate the triple confluence idea. I just trade it. Right, whatever side breaks, I try to go opposite. So here it just broke the buy side. I'm looking for some type of short. That's it. A short above the Asian session open. That's all. But if we had to be very specific in the ones that tend to be more accurate, they tend to land in triple confluence ideas naturally by itself. Naturally. And it's going to run the side of liquidity that it wants to first and go opposite. Here we ran buy side. Let's take this off. We don't need this. So we're going to stock a short opportunity above the Asian opening price. So you see that level? Everything transcribed to the one minute now. These are the levels we're playing in between. There was buy side and sell side. Price shows this way. Traders are what? Retail traders, I like to say this. Retail traders like to start the kill zone, but commercial traders like to end the kill zone, if that makes sense. So let, let that go over your head. Retail traders like to start the kill zone. Commercial traders end it. And what I mean by that is retail traders are the first to the gate, ready to rush in, take a trade, right? Asian sessions open. Oh, we got to make money. We got to make money. It's moving. It's moving. FOMO, it's leaving us. So let's trade. Oh, it's going up. Oh, let's just buy. Full margin. Let's blow our account right now. Yeah, buy, 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 buy. The market's leaving us. These are the rookie traders. Traders that have no model. No consistency. They're just buying right now at this point. This is just a scenario, right? I'm being dramatic. Right? Some people may not understand. Oh, why are you talking like this? I'm just being very dramatic about it. Because I know there's traders that have done this and that still do this. Asian session opens. They're in here. They're just buying it. There might be some ideas for them to go long on and prices showing that support higher. But eventually that does give win sometimes. Your trade idea does not have to continue for hundreds of pips. It might give win. And give up. And the sale is going to coast another way. And this is where you're going to see it change. So watch when, when we find our entry. So at this point, we're stalking. We're looking for an entry. And the entry is right there. Love it, man. I love this model. Here to here. There goes your fair value gap. There goes your swing point. You see the swing low? Zoom in. For those that are blind, that wear glasses. There you go. There goes your fair value gap. One, two, three. That's the swing low. There goes the speed through the swing low, right? The fair value gap is speed. It's, it's an indication. It's telling you something. The market is physically telling you something. I know the market's all coded. It's all ones and zeros, right? Zeros and ones. And however it is forming, this is how it's displaying it to traders, right? It's displaying it in this sequence whatever this formation is every time consistently there's other formations that do form in here but this is the one my eye goes to all the time i love it i've been studying price for all this time this is the one that my eye saw all the time so i was like in the entry idea going short now one to one 15 pips have it as a preset because that's all i use I don't do anything else. Preset. One to one, 15 pips. I'm done. 
I like that my target here, this is like, like the way sometimes it projects. I like the way the projection happens with the TP. It's getting me back down to opening price, the Asian Open. Let's play it forward. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. You can't tell me that is not magic, bro. You can't tell me that that's not magic. I know it wasn't the most sexiest trade. There was drawdown. We almost got stopped out. I know. Thank you for telling me. Kudos, right? Because I know people comment and say things like that. It's okay. That's why we have a stop loss. Again, let's put some numbers to this. Say you got a 10K account. You're risking 1% of that. That's 100 bucks. It's only $100. Do the math. Quick math. It's only $100. So if you win this trade, you're up $100. If, if you lose this trade, you're down $100. Let's say you don't want to risk 1%. You want to risk something else. Let's say you want to risk half of that. You want to risk 0.5. All right, you want to just risk 50 bucks, bro. You win this trade, you won 50 cash. You lose a trade, you lost 50 cash. You, you can live with this. You can live with losing $100. You can live with losing $50. Now, I know some people's circumstances might be different, right? I'm not trying to be ignorant to other people's lifestyles and their current situation. Maybe you can't, right? So let's cut the risk smaller. Maybe your accountant can't, and you don't feel the right risking this amount. You're not comfortable yet. All right, cut it again, quarter by quarter now. Cut it down again. Do what you want. Cut that in half. Take me two, five, but oops. Cut in half. That's how I play it over and over. And if you lose, you mitigate. Cut the risk. You risk instead of if you lost a trade. Let's say you took the trade, you lost one percent. Your next trade that you go into, you can't risk one percent of, of your equity. You can only risk half a percent of that equity. That's it. Point blank. Period. Amazing trade. Amazing trade. Triple confluence. I'm not sure if it goes back into stop loss or if this trade continues to sell off for the rest of the week. But this was like. Honestly, amazing. And look at that. Comes back to stop loss. See why? You got to take partials. You got to pay the trader. Because it's all sweet. Because everybody thinks that this trade is the one shot, one kill. This is the trade that's going to make them rich tonight. This is the trade that's going to run for 2,000 pips. It's not. And even if it was, promise you, you probably would have got stopped out. Promise you, you probably would have already closed the trade idea because you're like, yo, let me not get too greedy. You would have already closed out of that trade, even if it continued to drop. You would have closed out. But at least you paid the trader something. That's the Asian session model. Do you see how we use that? Do you see how we simply had steps and protocols? It's not that we were looking for a daily bias necessarily for this day, for this kill zone. We were simply waiting for the market to provide us conditions where Selling was either the best choice or buying was the best choice. That's it. There's no forcing this. Outside of that, like I said, if we get into that daily chart, we get into those swing trading ideas. I know you guys like to see those swing trades. We had an awesome swing trade on GJ last month, bro. Back to back swing trades. We had swing trades in August with EU. Then we had a swing trade with GJ in September, bro. October, we're going to try to do the same every time. So far this week, we had what? I think probably like four consistent swing trades. It was fantastic for the year. Uh, let's go into this. New York model. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Let's pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. I got to open the windows. It's getting hot. I'm talking too much. All right. Five. Get this off the chart. We don't need that no more. Starting over again, New York model. Here we are. We're currently above Sunday's opening price, where price is currently at trading going into this Tuesday kill zone, going into October.
My bad. I had a sneeze. Whoo wee. All right, we got this south side here. We got this buy side up here. And if it, if it ever sounds like it went mute, it's because I went mute <laughs> for a reason. Let's play it forward. See what happens. Buy side is ran here. All right, so we ran buy side here, right? That's swing high. One, two, three. That's the swing high here. Look at it. Some people be confused sometimes. I'm like, are we sure we're looking at the same chart? See the swing high? Bang, hits it. That's the buy side liquidity pool. At that point, we should be hunting or looking to stock shorts. All right. Well, what's different about this trade? Look at where the entry is forming and look at what we've been talking about the last thing about confluences. What's different about this one? Can anybody tell me? Look at the chart carefully. This is midnight opening price. This is 7 a.m. And this is Sunday's opening price. How many confluence do we have here? Three. I'll take my time. Can we get that in? It is hot in here, man. 
Thank you. Number two out of three. Good answer, guys. Thank you guys for paying attention. All right, we have a two out of three. It's not the best, right? It's not one of those pinnacle ideas that we normally look for, that I would want to look for. It's a two out of three idea. It's good. It's not great. It's good. It's not excellent, but it's good. So we could take that shot. Everything is still opportunity. Zoom into that. Take a look at that trade idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely, man? Look at that. It's happening above 7 a.m. It's not happening above midnight, but it's also happening above weekly. Two out of three. That was a great idea. We ran buy side. Yes, we were in drawdown. It took one level of buy side, then the entry formed. Some people have asked me, does it have to take out every single level of buy side? No, it doesn't. Sometimes it's like six buy side liquidity pools some days, and it only takes out one or two. And then the entry forms. It's as soon as it breaks this right here, as soon as it breaks that buy side that we're looking for, right there when it crosses that line, that's when we start stalking it. We don't stalk it once it breaks all the levels available to one side. Once it breaks one level on either side, buy side or sell side, you're sitting there stalking it like prey. You're stalking for your prey. You're stalking for this entry. That's it. it. And this thing sells, man. Hit Sunday's opening price. And I don't think it... Does it return back down here again? I don't think so. After this, it shoots up for the rest of the week. I believe. Hit Sunday's opening. Oh, I shot back again. Okay, it did. And, and we can see how price... Went from being in a premium for Asian session on Monday and New York model on Tuesday, naturally, all by itself. Even if you weren't looking for daily bias. Some people might say, oh, look at this on the right side of the chart. Ah, oh, yeah, that thing was going to sell. We got that breaker. Right into that. Nice. Let's play it forward. With this Wednesday Asian session model. After this, we'll move on to our pair of the month. And stop. I think we're coming up close to it. Nah, I didn't get it. Again, thank you guys for coming out. Your time is very valuable. Everything I learned, I try to convey it and Explain it as best as I can in these videos and these Zoom calls with you guys. I'm a busy dude, I'll be trying my best, man. I don't know why I did it like that. Oh, we got sell side here. We got sell side here. Right, we can run through this real quick. We don't have to mark everything up. We, we, I know some of us are very intelligent. I know you guys are smart, right? But if you're on this channel, I know you're smart. I already know that. You're in the right place. We can see we run the Asian session buy side or New York lunch buy side, correction, the New York lunch from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. We're going into Asian session here. Asian open. We're above where? Look at that. We're above in a weekly opening price. We're above that. We're also above that midnight opening price on Wednesday. It's over here. Great. Let's play it forward. Get it. On the one minute, now we're stalking that idea because it ran buy side. We're looking for an entry. Entry forms here very quickly, too. At 8.36, it forms. Bang. This is Wednesday. Everybody was struck. Everybody was looking at UJ. I was looking at NJ. Bang, hits it, and loser. See that? Not everything's guaranteed. And this was a triple confluence idea. What the heck? I did not mean to do that. We could have won this one. 
Uh, orders is it orders i don't even know how to get this off the screen trading huh. around what time of the week do you draw the week to be open price as soon as it opens oh what time is it i'll tell you right now i mean trading view gives it to you Look at it. Oops, sorry. Right here. Look at the alley chart. Look, Friday. Boom. Sunday's open price. It automatically gives it to you right there. Boom, boom. What is it? 5 p.m. or 6 p.m.? New York Eastern Standard Time? Here. On any any chart. If you use if you're using Trading View, it gives it to you automatically. Even if you were to go down to the one minute chart. Go here. Ooh, one minute. We got it right there. Friday. Let's go over. Move it over one. Right there. That's the, that's it right there. That's the opening price. It's either five oh four or six oh four. No problem. That Asian session idea that we talked about, it failed, as you can see. And I want to show you feeling ideas because nothing is perfect. No matter how well we wait for ideas, nothing can be perfect. And it stopped us out. And look, it stopped us out. And look at what it went for after stopping us out. I think the same thing. I don't think anything happened on UJ. didn't give my thing. But NJ stopped us out. And... That would have been one hell of a sell if it wasn't stopped out. At times, the market will do this. Stop you out and run in your direction. And it sucks. I know. But this is what you sign up for. Some people might say, ah, I would have went with a with a 25 pip stop loss. I would have went with 30 pip stop loss. That's true. Go with it. I agree with you. Open up your stop loss and tell me how much more consistent you get. And we'll see how far off your consistency starts to shake when you start widening your stop loss. Do it. See what happens. You might be able to find a, a better sweet spot than 15 pips. I just picked 15 because that's the one I was most comfortable with. And I saw that after the running buy side, a 15 pip run is as far as I want it to go. Turtle suit. I don't want it to go any more than 15. Done. But that is NJ. So we're going to move on to the next topic. I'm going to drink a glass of water. If you have any questions, please let me know. We're going to be moving on to the pair filtering process. We talk about this all the time. People ask me these questions. Is there a video you got about this, Deontay? Yo, bro, you got a video? Yes, I do. It's on the channel. Just go through the playlist. I'm telling you it's there. If, if, you, if you see me talk about it in Discord, Telegram, anywhere, if I'm talking to you personally one-on-one, -on -one, telling you I've already spoke about it on the YouTube channel. It's there. All right, home stretch. All right, third quarter. So we're in October, and the pair that I selected for this month was NJ. So let's take a look at NJ. Should just tap instead. I don't have anything fancy in my chart. Right, this is how the chart is set up. I will show you guys how I set it up every single time. People ask me, do you start at this day? Do you start at that day? It's the first official trading day of the month. And the first official trading day of the month of October is October 1st. Not October 2nd, October 1st, Tuesday. That's the first official one. It could have been Monday. See, even though it's the start of a new week, it's not Monday, the September, September the 30th. No, it's October 1st, Tuesday. I use my if to look back data range pool here. Can you keep a stagnant one, right? One that remains the same and you cast forward. Yes, you could do that. But I tend to just keep moving it with me every single month. That's just the way I personally use it and the way I interpret it when I went through the mentorship with ICT. That's how I use it. And since then, it's been actually successful with me. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's been something consistent. 
I would start here. I count back 20 bars, not 28 days. I know it says 28 days. We're on the daily chart. So 20 bars is 20 days. I think the indi this session, this indicator is including weekends or Sundays. I'm only going back 20 days without including Sundays. That's it. Then I do the same thing again. Then I do the same thing again. Three times, you get a grand total of a 60-day look back if the data range pool. Then I cast toward 20 bars, another 20 bars. Why do I cast toward 20 bars? Some people say, what's the importance of that? So I know when I should expect the trade idea to be finished or for me to stop trading for the month. 20 days into the month, I'm not looking for no more swing trades. The swing trade is done. So it's gone. I can't find the swing trade after this, after this day. It's over with. I'm trying to find it probably midway, maybe 16 days in, 15 days in, two weeks into the month. Not the first week. Sometimes it's not the very first week. It'll be a rare occasion. For example, right? Let's just take a look. Take a look at last month. We did the same thing last month. It's still on the chart. There it is. Look at the swing trade. September. What did Deontay do? I did the same thing on September. Back 20, back 40, back 60. That was for September. We did that. The entire daily updates are on the YouTube channel. There's no way you guys can sit here and say, yo, D, I'm confused. I'm lost. How'd you get to that long? I did it day by day, literally every day. Not every single day, but the most important days leading up to what I thought was important for the community to know. And I did, I went long there in a discount, ran up. What did we hit? If the 20-day high. Bang. It would have been nice to see it run the... 20 day low and then run back up, but nothing's perfect, right? But it still came back and hit a significant level. After hitting that significant level right here, next day, huge sell off. Huge sell off. That was cool. Same thing. Let's go back another month, right? Let's go back two more months. We did the same exact thing for August, fam. Nothing has changed. We do this month after month after month after we don't change for nobody. At least me. I don't change to nobody. I appreciate the information and the knowledge. I really do. But your boy is set in his ways. Dante, what do you say? Early entries at 815 and 13 per is too early. I don't think it's too early. No. I do not think it's too early. You may disagree on that. I'll repeat that again. So someone said, Dante. Forgot the apostrophe. <laughs> Deontay, what do you say? Early entries as 8 15 p.m. Asian session when the first 15 minute candle purchase, the buy side or sell side liquidity, is it too early? I don't think it's too early. I don't think it's too early because I've seen setups that would run it really early and then give the short right away or give the long right away. But then, same thing to, to, to what you're saying, there are also a handful of times where. What you're saying, I've seen it fail too. I'm taking the shot. I'm, I'm taking the shot. You may want to filter it through. What I'm giving you and providing you is my cookie cutter approach. You may want to filter it a little more through, right? You may want to add a layer to it. You know, Deontay, I like the model, but I noticed that it does this and does that, and I don't really like it in that particular way. Respect to the model, but I'm going to tweak it a little bit. You can do that too. That's fair to say. Right, you same thing with me showing you if the look back data range. You may not like the way I use it. That's cool. You may tweak it a little bit. That's that's solely up to you. Again, we use the same thing. Look, August, we went back 20, 40, 60. And this was a brand new pair. It wasn't like I was watching this pair for the entire um couple months going into August. We were looking at different pairs. I just happened to pick this pair for the month during the filtering process and just threw up IPTA on it like any other pair. And you can see how it failed to break the if the 20 day low and ran up, took off the if the 20 day high, it ran right through it, ran through the 40 day high as well, ran through the 60 day high as well. And look at how price stayed right in that range between those if the levels. That's the 40, that's the 60, and that's the 20. Look at how it breaks through those levels. It broke through, uh, there you go. It broke through those levels and it stayed here in this range and then it pushed away significant levels and then on top of that yes i know we have the the, the busy right bullish momentum higher swing low this is this is trend 
what you're seeing on my chart, if you didn't watch the daily updates, this is bullish trend. The daily updates, I'm telling you, everything you ever need, bro, I already give it to you. The Discord channel is just more personal interaction with me on a one-on-one basis. Everything else, it's on the YouTube channel. I showed you guys daily daily bias. How did I get this swing trade? I was I was following the trend. And we'll go back. We'll, we'll, we'll slowly walk through this real quick. I really don't want to clear the chart because I want to print this out. I try to print out my trades, you know, especially the ones like this. These are ones that you want to remember because these things, these same formations will form again. And I will have a database. I will have a library when I can just flip through. When I, I know when I'm 50 years old and it's time to pass on the information to the next generation. Be like, yo, I did this already. I seen the market through all these years. I grew old with the market. I seen how it traded during this, traded during that. Got to print them out. Uh, What was that? You, EU? Okay. A little sidetrack, but it's still important here. But this is how we, this is how I trade. Settings, uh, trading, you know, events to take this off. Where are we at? August, yeah, go back to August, right? Go back to August. There we go. So, I come into the month almost with a fresh start, clean slate. Not really trying to anticipate too much. I do look back to see what the most recent swing highs and swing lows are, but this is August. This is my beginning point here. I'm just waiting to see. Do we break buy side? Do we break sell side going into this month? That's all I'm looking for because that's going to be my momentum for the bias. So to going into the month, we can see we break sell side. So I'm like, okay, we broke sell side. So what I say to myself, I'm on alert on the daily chart. I'm on alert. I'm like, okay, this could only be two things. It's black and white. It's white and black. It's what, it could only be two things. This could be a false break or bearish momentum. If I could spell, that's not correct. It can only be two things, one or the other. It's either going to continue to go down or it's going to now change trend. This is how I start to – this is how the decision-making is quick. It's quick. I'm not sitting here watching this chart confused like, oh, what's going on? What's going on with the market? No, I don't have time to be sitting here worried about the market. I told myself two years ago I would never be a slave to this market. I do not want to be a slave to the screen. I hate sitting in front of the screen for too long. It's not something I like enjoy doing. I've been doing this for long enough. I should be able to get in here. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. I don't have to sit here and wonder, oh, what's the daily bias? Oh, oh what's the no, I don't have time. I have other things to do in my life. I'm a brother, <laughs> I'm a son, I'm a great friend, right? I'm a business owner. I have other things to do. I'm a farmer. Like, there's other things I gotta do. So it's gotta be quick decisions. It's gotta be reasonable too. And all the years of trading. This is how I've been, I've been, I've been doing it, man. This is how what, what I've gotten to the pinnacle of trading, in my, in my opinion, at least. See the false break or bearish momentum. I would lean towards bearish momentum just because I want to see price go, continue towards that direction. But if I have something else in my analysis that's telling me, oh, you know, the 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 seasonal chart for the month should be showing, okay, weak dollar or strong euro or whatever. Right? And we talked about this already. Go back and watch the daily updates for the entire month of August. You'll hear me say the same things I'm telling you right now in this video already and catching that swing trade. So I'm watching it. Okay, then it shoots up. I'm like, dang. So instead of printing a lower swing high, because if it breaks a swing low, I want to see if it's going to print a lower swing high. So then I could get into trend and sell with that lower swing high. But instead, price quickly turns around and shoots up. So that, that goes out the way. Because now I'm going to be like, okay, it's not bearish momentum. It's probably a false break. I'm like, okay, we're probably working with a buy here because now price runs what? A buy side liquidity pool here. Let's make it red. Make this blue. It also runs another one here. But let's just talk about the first one it runs initially because that, that's where it starts. It doesn't have to run six of them. It doesn't have to run 10 of them. 
It just needs to run one. It's a swing high. One, two, three. That's bullish momentum now. Right? Now the same thing, vice versa. Now is this bullish momentum or is this now also double fake out? That does happen. Sometimes you get a double fake out. You get price run down, up, and then back down. You get that. But you got to follow the daily trend. You got to find it. Follow the daily momentum. So which one is it? Is it a bullish or is it a, a, a false break? And in order to get that confirmation, I'm just looking to see what the next daily swing point is. You have to be patient for this. I say it again. You have to be patient for this. You can't go into this market. Oh, I'm going to be I'm just going to buy. Just so I see it's going up. You will get burned in the retracement. You will get cooked. Stir fried. I'm telling you, you're going to get cooked. Wait for the higher swing low to form. That's all you're paying attention to. This is a swing low. So if it's going to be a bullish trend, what is a bullish trend? Higher. This is all it is. This is all it is. People like to use fancy words. Higher swing high plus higher swing low. That equals a bullish trend. That's all a bullish trend is. That's trading one on one, on the daily chart. People make it seem like it's something complicated, dog. It's not. Play it forward. Play it forward. Right. We got the fair value gap too. Right. Right. Fair value gap. We got the busy. Right. That's that's what a sign. That's a sign. That's an inefficiency. And with my experience of trading, I already know. Seeing it over and over again for the last couple of years, I already know if it's going to be a bullish trend, the higher swing low is going to form inside the inefficiency. Just a bullish characteristic that I see over and over again. We can all point this out. A higher swing low is going to form here. Sometimes it gets close and it fails. It gets real close and it fails. Oh, sorry. It gets close and it fails. It gets close to make the higher swing low in it. Sometimes it happens like that. But oftentimes I see it trade into it and then run away. And it's going to do it in a three-bar formation just like this. See how it's one, two, three? It's going to do the same thing, one, two, three, and go up. It takes three days for the commercial speculators to change the price action. Do not let that go over your head again, please. It takes three days. Since we're on the daily chart, it takes three days for the commercials to reinstall their net longs again or reinstall their net shorts again. It takes three days. Three daily candles. Same thing on the weekly chart. It takes three weeks because it's fractal. Same thing on the monthly chart. It takes three months for them to change the trend, the higher time frame trend. It's always going to come in waves of three. Power three. Three, 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 three. Everything is three, 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 three. It's not four, it's not five, it's not six. It's three days. It's three weeks. It's three months because that's all. All you keep getting, swing points, swing points. I know I'm talking with a lot of energy right now, but I, I, I just want you to understand how simple it is. And you just sit here and watch the swing points. That's all it's comprised of, a swing high, a swing low. You got a little bit of consolidation in between these areas. Yes, but follow the momentum. The same thing I'm showing you here happens in this leg here. Promise you. This uptrend leg. Right here, we're going to go back to this leg in just a second. We're going to talk about this leg here. I'm going to circle it for you guys so we come back to it. This leg right here that happened in May, right? Leaving April going into May. That same price action, that same similar formation, because it's all the same, just a different month, happened here. Happened right here. Watch this. Play it forward. Play it forward. Oh, snap. We just touched the fair value gap. Could that be a buy? Yes, possibly. One, two, three. It took them three days to make another swing point. You got to wait. It might have took a couple days or whatever, five, ten days, but it's only going to happen in three bars. One, two, three. It's quick. Catches people off guard. They don't even know it's coming sometimes. That's your higher swing low. We just did that. Look, look at the bullish trend formula. Higher swing high plus higher swing low equals bullish trend. Higher swing high, higher swing low equals bullish trend. 
Right. Is there a high swing high that formed? Yes. It's higher than this one. It's up there. Is this a higher swing low? Yeah, it is. It's higher than this one down there. Nice. Could we be looking to go long? Yeah, we can. I'm not going to go into any bitty details because there are a few. There was a cru there was crucial things you talked about right here about this candle here. For those that know, no, go back to August the eighth or August uh, or Friday. Uh, Friday. I probably talked about it on this day about this candle. Something about this candle is the outside bar. Right, play it forward, play it forward, play it forward, and what happens? Just keep trading up, keep trading up, and keep trading up. And then we got to the up to 20 day cast forward, I believe. No, was it? No, I think so. It was here, right there, up to 20 day cast forward, right there. That's what you guys saw here. Share this tab instead. Look at that. Same thing I just showed you happened over here on this price leg. Right here. I know I'm cherry picking, but hindsight is the only way we get exposure to get experience. Don't let these people fool you, bro. Stop letting these people talk on Instagram and Twitter and, and make you and guilt and guilt trip you into feeling a certain way about all oh, the way you learn how to trade. Bro, hindsight is your best friend. I don't care what anybody tells you. How else are you gonna how much you gonna learn? How much are you gonna learn? Take a look at that price action here. Ah, dang, I didn't mean to clear it. Okay. I'm not trying to put frames on this. A box in, but this is the area we're looking at. Just take a look. We've got a swing low. Higher swing low. Higher swing low. Higher swing low. Higher swing high. Same thing. Over. And over again. All they kept doing was breaking swing highs. Look, it broke the swing high. What do I say? Oh, you should be on alert. You should be paying attention to something that's going to happen here on the chart. What could happen? It's either a false break. It's either a false break and it's going to go short. It's going to go crashing down on everybody. Or it's not a false break and it's bullish momentum to start a new leg. It's black and white. Stop making it complex, bro. Overthinking it. It's always been in front of our face 24-7. 12, 12 months out of the year. It's been there every single time. Even when you weren't trading, it was already doing it. Before I even learned this, it was already doing it. It's not something new that I discovered. No. Market's already been doing this by itself. Honestly, fascinated by how they made this market. Really, truly am fascinated. How they algorithmically time and price this thing in. It's crazy how rigged the system is. What happens... Swing high broken, what happens? Higher swing low. And what do I say after getting the higher swing low? What could you do? Wait for a down day to buy. Look, two down days, buy. Look at that. You got three, four, five days trending, almost a week up after that down, those two down days confirming the higher swing low. But everybody wants to say, ah, trading's hard. How do you find the trend? Again, I'm not here to make fun of anybody. I'm not here to make teas or anything like that. I'm just pointing out, take a deep breath. Look at the daily chart. Look at the weekly chart. Look at the monthly chart. Get off the one hour. <laughs> Get off the 30 minute. Get off the five. Get off the 15. Get off the one minute. You're not going to find a trend that way. You need to be looking at the daily and up. I love the daily. The four hour, debatable. That's debatable. The daily is going to be your best friend. You want to cut right into the heart of what trend is? Go to the daily chart. Stop wasting time. All right, let's move on. So back to IPTA. We're looking at NJ. Facts. People wasting time, bro. Let's go straight to the daily chart. What are you wasting your time for? Talking about four-hour chart. What are you wasting your time for? Go to the daily chart. Does it make sense? You get more data. Think about it. You get more data the higher the time frame you go on. And I've had people – I had not even – I haven't had debates or anything like that, but I've had people sit here and tell me, right, short discussions, because if, if it don't make sense to me, I'm honestly not engaging it, and I'm just going to be like, you sound silly, and you don't know what you're talking about. Well, you can say you can say whatever you want on Twitter, you can say whatever you want on Instagram, YouTube comments, say what you want, whatever, but I know you ain't catching the swing trades. 
And I know you don't know the market the way we know it in, over here in Forensic Forex. I just know you don't. I just know. You don't talk about it or show it in your trade. You have no consistent model. You just don't. Um, NJ, though. Right? Let's get back to it. Why did we pick NJ? Why did we pick NJ? We picked NJ because of the macros. First things first. Someone had earlier texted me, right? In the Telegram chat telling me, Yo, D, D, I don't understand interest rate differentials. Yo, can you please explain that? Like, you talk about this thing called interest rate differentials. The bank's got two different rates. You talk about weak currency versus strong currency. I don't know what you're talking about, D. I got you, right? I've done this already, but we're going to do it again. For those that are new or just watching, we're going to talk about these macros because this is what fundamentally impacts fiat currency, the forex market. It's interest rates. That's the primary, I'm going to say it again. This is the primary driver to what influences why a currency goes up or down in value. The interest rates by the central banks determine that. And if they say no, they are lying because they are the one that generates the yield and what gets the investors to say, yo, this fiat currency is more valuable than this one. Let's dump this fiat currency. Yo, good morning. Shout out to India. Good morning, fam. Glad you could make it, yo. Like I was saying, the primary driver to the interest rates. Sorry. <laughs> the primary driver to the Forex market <laughs> is the interest rates. And if the central banks tell you no, they are lying because they are the ones that create the yield that the investors even want. If this asset is going to yield me 5% per year, 5% per month, 5% per day, whatever it is, compounding, I'm going over there. I need to make money as a businessman. We're going to make this money. If this asset or this fiat currency, right, we're talking about Forex. If this asset or fiat currency is not going to yield me anything by buying it and holding it, why are we holding it? We're going to dump it. We're going to sell it. We don't want this. We need to go into other fiat currencies. That's what these central banks are doing. Primary driver is the rates. That's why you're seeing a lot of fluctuations this year. Because the rates are changing. The scenery is changing. The world is changing. Right? Inflation has been getting too hot. So what do the banks do? Cycle in. Rates got to go up. It's a cycle. So when the rates start changing, guess what? Forex is popping again. When the rates go down, Forex is popping again because there's differences changing between these banks. So that's why you're going to see the market move. They're going to be dynamic, but you got to pick specific pairs, though. New Zealand Bank, right? The Reserve National Bank for New Zealand. Let's go to that. I know I talk with a lot of passion, but it's because nobody else is doing it. They're not. They, they're all here trying to sell you, oh, this model is 100% accurate, blah, blah, blah. But they're not teaching nobody fundamentals. They're not teaching nobody how to find daily buys, how to find specific entries. We got to do that for the community, bro. We got to. I'm telling you, the next generation depends on it, bro. The next generation of traders, right? They depend on it. They need this information, bro. The younger traders will need this. Let's go down. What are we looking at? Right there, the Reserve National Bank of New Zealand, right? 5.25 interest rate currently. Compared to the Bank of Japan, which is 0 0.25 right now because they raised it recently. They were in negative, though. But you can see there's a big difference between these two banks. There's a big difference. There's a 5.5, right, difference between the two banks. It's just a huge rate. There's a huge gap. Where are you going to park your money? Are you going to park your money in a bank account or a bank that's only going to yield you 0 0.25 on your money? Whatever that is annually, whatever that is um, monthly, whatever it is, right? Are you going to bank with them? No, you're not. Because forget them. I'm going over here to New Zealand. They're giving me more bank for buck to bank with them. 5.25. Be going with y'all. Now, before, in the past, let's go back. Let's go through history. 
Because somebody, like I said, someone in the Telegram channel said, I don't understand why. What's the point? This stuff about interest rate differentials, it don't make no sense. I, I don't see how it impacts fiat currency. Oh, yeah, let's talk about it. It was where was that? It was negative in 2016. That's where they messed up. When they pushed their rates negative in 2016, they messed up. They they were in for it. Their their fiat currency was not going to be appreciated. Right? Everybody was going to leave yen. Let's go back to 2016. I love this example. I love showing this because it's just it's night and day. The fundamentals are there. You see where the institutions are coming in. Commercial speculators are stepping in. The central bank traders are se stepping in and saying, yo, we don't want this currency no more, bro. We want this. Forget that. Let's go to the monthly chart. Let's look at the trend. Let's go back to 2016. 2016. Yeah. There you go. Right, let's just find the beginning of it. 2016 up here. Look at that. So 2016 was the year. I don't know what's the exact month. Let me check. The exact month. February, February 2016 is when they, they, their Bank of Japan went negative rates. And we can see as the years go on, going into pretty much almost 2025, look at how much more appreciative New Zealand dollar got. All of a sudden, the change of rate started getting really funky. And let's see what the rate was for New Zealand. In 2016, right? Yeah. Let's check it out. They don't have it up here. I don't know why. Can't go back. But 2016, right? Go here. 2016. It was 2.25. It never went negative. Look at that. They even cut. They cut going into COVID pretty much. They still did. They still weren't negative though. They were still positive. So they were still big, beating the Bank of Japan. They held a higher rate all throughout 2016, going into now. Right now, their rate is high, and you see, look, their rates went up. So so did their currency. Let's go back to the currency chart. So did their currency go up? Went straight up. Let's take a look at the yen. Let's flip it upside down. All right, on 2016, I got a sneeze. Right there, 2016, they made their rates negative, consolidated. For a bit, and, and then what happened? Yen started depreciating over the years. This started tanking year after year, year after year. To where we are now, you see why? The fundamentals went where? The fundamentals said, "Forget the yen. We don't want you no more. We want New Zealand dollar." Look, it's going up. Look, it's going up while the yen's going down. The yen's going down. New Zealand dollar's going up. This looks no different if even if I put it on the, the futures of New Zealand dollar. Where you at? Twenty sixteen. Close enough. Twenty sixteen. Choppy. Actually still choppy as the futures, honestly. But when you put it together as a currency pair, when you put these two things together, what do you get? You get New Zealand dollar versus Japanese yen. And we can see it depreciated yen and New Zealand dollar went up. I think if you were to flip this backwards, I think you can do that on trading view. There you go. Completely opposite. 
whole bottom. See how it makes a bottom here? It makes a top here. Japanese yen versus New Zealand dollar. Look how it drops. Look at how this rallies. So that's one reason why I selected New Zealand dollar for this month. One reason why. Allergies are killing me tonight. I apologize. That's one reason why I picked New Zealand dollar and versus Japanese yen. Because there's a rate difference of five point what fifty between the two banks. That's crazy. Like five point five difference. So that's great. Secondly, take a look at the seasonal chart. Right? Seasonal tendencies. Are these currencies moving in different directions? Are they moving in the same direction? Let's take a look. Look. Okay. You guys hear me? There we go. Okay, there goes the audio. I apologize. So we're looking at the US dollar. You can see how US dollar is moving sideways, right? DXY is moving sideways. When I see the market move sideways, I like to think of this as, as okay, Maybe other fiat currencies can take advantage of the choppiness of it moving side sideways and not being decisive seasonally for the month of October, moving sideways. So that means New Zealand dollar might take advantage of this and be very bullish. It might want to get again, so get ahead, to, get ahead of the DXY. That's a possibility. Or they possibly could both trend in the same direction. That could happen in one scenario. Another thing. Shoot this tab. You can see here. See, October is moving sideways. New Zealand dollar is moving up for the month of October. You guys saw that. Share this tab. It's going up. Let's take a look now at the Japanese yen. Seasonal charts are very important. It's one of the macros that I like to include in my filtering process. I just don't pick a pair because I like the pair. Oh, let me just pick the pair because... I tend to like UJ for some odd reason. I don't know how we as traders tend to like gravitate towards one pair and like say, oh, this is our baby for the rest of our trading career. No, none of these pairs are my baby. They all are my baby, right? Pretty much. I'll, I'll utilize them, pull and play with all of them when I can. They're not all going to be great every single month. Understand that not every single pair. Out of 12 months, is going to be the same. It's going to be difficult. So switch it up so you can filter out those moments and times where you have an entire month of consolidation. That's the only reason why I switch it up. Because I'm really not trying to run into a trading pair that's going to consolidate for 20 days. Right, Every 20 days, I'm looking for a swing trade. Run into a month that consolidates and try to filter out the best pair possible. October, look at this. The yen is kind of neutral too, sideways. So I really do think New Zealand dollar would probably take advantage of this as well. Let's go back to the chart. There you go. All right? Japanese yen, cyber for October. Let's go back to the chart. 
Now, with that being said, you understand why I picked New Zealand Dollar versus Japanese Yen for the month of October. That's it. Ah, I almost forgot one more thing. Small range and large range. So something that has to deal with the price action, right? Outside of the data now, the price action itself, the monthly chart, I'm on the monthly chart. The previous candle was small. That was another factor. The fact that this candle, body, not tail, not wick, none of that, just the body of the candle, it was small. I was like, yes, that's the one. You know why this is the one? Because the next month, it's going to be dynamic most likely. We could get two back-to-back -back small monthly candles, right, body-wise. This candle technically was large based on the wick, right? But it gave up a lot of its gains. But I want a candle like this that holds its gains, that holds its gains. Even if it did give up some of its gains, per se, at least it was still it was still a dynamic candle. But I know the next month, October, best believe, it probably is going to kick into a large range cycle. That's something I learned from Larry Williams, and I incorporated it into my filtering process because the market has a natural cycle, small, large. Again, black and white. You got to be very quick and decisive with the way you think. And this is, these are the systems that allow me to be more concise and get to the answer quicker than other folks. Small, large. Okay. Was yesterday a large range candle? Was today a small range candle? Oh, yesterday was a large range cycle. Okay. Maybe today we're not going to get a lot of dynamic movement. Maybe we shouldn't trade this pair. Let's look at another pair. Oh, yesterday was a small range cycle. Okay. Then maybe tomorrow is going to be large. Let's look at this pair. I want to study it. And then we add in all those other layers like the kill zones, the triple confluence. We can add those things, right? You see the layer to it, the onion to it? Same thing with the monthly chart. This is a small down candle, and if this is going to continue to be a bullish trend, hopefully it is, if the fundamentals pick back up. Because I don't know if the Bank of Japan is still going to intervene, right? Those, those are other things that we are not even talking about. The Bank of Japan can intervene. They can raise rates again. Um, the carry trade is going to unwind very quickly because, like I said, it's been trending up for so long. They've been making so much money on this bullish trend, man. Bro, they've been making, like I said, the carry trade was almost a $2 trillion trade selling the yen. The yen was cooked. Cooked, bro. And the fact that it's been going on for so long and the Bank of Japan is now intervening, manually intervening to save their currency and to support their, con their, their continent and uh, their country and support their citizens – they are going to now try to buy back the yen as strong as they can. And that's what happened here in July. And they also raised the rates. Not one time. Yeah, was it one time? Yeah, one time. But it was a huge jump. It wasn't like a small incremental jump. It was from negative. Let me check the chart again. It was from negative to something to something. It was a huge jump. Right? It wasn't like a nap. They went from negative to 10. They didn't even go from negative to zero. You see that? They didn't even go. They went jump 20. And then they jumped another whole 15. Right? They jumped 35 basis points from that negative. Huge swings. Huge fluctuation. So we we're going to see that happen. And the carry trade got checked for sure. Carry trade got his chin checked. That's why we saw a lot of the end crosses selling off so fast. Dynamic price movement. You can see the manual intervention. The thing just dumped. You saw those days. I know those got those traders that witnessed those days where they intervene manually. We're talking about pips, dog. Pips you can't even imagine. Things you just ah, you can't even catch it sometimes if you're paying attention to the wording in the meetings, right? When they're gonna intervene, what level they said they were gonna intervene. We we're able to catch some of those. Some of you guys know what we're talking about. That's why we picked NJ for this month. Other candles have been exhausted. So if we take a look, monthly chart, like I said, it's small. Let's take a look at some other pairs that just didn't make the cut. You Swissy could have made the cut, honestly. You CAD too.
G U could G U possibly now G U wasn't gonna make the cut. No, there's not enough interest rate differential. A U didn't make the cut. It's another large candle. It's large, large body candle. Don't need that. And you know, U J no right. N J had a smaller body than that. But look at U J, already pushing up, making what? Look at this. What is this? It's making a swing point. Right, every three months, every three months. Look at that. It take it took them three months to try to get this thing to probably turn around, make a new leg, or turn around for a retracement. Either turn around for a retracement, or turn around for a continuation. It takes three bars, guys. It takes time. And GJ was not bad. GJ wasn't bad. That was previous month. Right, we did GJ going into. Um, September, and it was still small. GJ could have made the cut as well. KJ, no. Could have, but wasn't the one. EJ could have went in too, right? But not the one I wanted to go with. Swiss J possibly too. So that's how we use those ideas to filter out certain peers. Now, what I'm thinking right now, currently on the daily chart, right now you get to actually see my breakdown because I haven't been doing the daily updates. I'm just taking a break. First week, let the retail traders trade that, bro, like NFP and all that stuff, bro. It's fun to trade it. Don't get me wrong. It's fun to trade it. It's fun to get it right. It's excitement. You know, you get the serotonin going off in your brain. You get the dopamine going off in your brain. Get all these happy, good feeling hormones going off in your brain, right? It's good. It's cool, right? Whatever. Get a, 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 a spike of, uh, what's the word, endorphins in your brain going off. People, traders love that, right? They're addicted to it. Endorphins going off. Ah, pips, candles moving, you know? Um, let, let the retail traders take that. Study it. Trade it if you want to the first week. And trade NFP if you want to. Paper trade it. If you're going to trade it, cut the risk in half. If you're going to trade that first week of the month, Cut everything in half. Do not risk what you would only risk until the second week. My personal bet, my personal bet is to not to trade it. Leave it alone. Don't trade it. Right now, I currently see. Hmm. Let's see. We got a swing low that already formed below the monthly opening price. Did we recently break a swing high? Let's go back into time. Yes, we did. Right here. Broke a swing high. So this was what? Something that would cause me to be like, okay, bullish momentum. See how we do this every single month? Doesn't change. Bullish momentum. Did we get a higher swing low? Yes, we get one right here. One, two, three. After that higher swing low, one, two, three, we could look to buy after a down candle. Just got one here. Could have brought after that down candle. We saw a lot of the yen crosses fly up today. Saw a dollar fly up. Uh, U.S. economic data says that the jobs, a lot more jobs are being added to the Guys can't hear me. We're back. See, I told you, it at least happens at least once. All right, we're back. Sorry for the technical difficulties. So you can see the yen 
It's been selling off. Just traded back into that Sibby. We're getting some type of lower swing high, lower swing low. Rated some type of buy side here. Peaked up here. Ran it. Even had a breakaway gap. Oh, my gosh. What a breakaway gap here. Broke up. Price completely filled it. Traded back into the gap range, right? Traded right back into the gap range. Created a lower swing high. And ever since then, Yen's been depreciating again. Uh-oh. Interventions are coming probably. Unless they don't have the money to do it anymore. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. But, yeah. They just, they're breaking this thing down, man. They're literally breaking this thing down. Let's go back to is the dollar. And opposite should be occurring here, right? If yen is going to drop, we want to see signs that we get a higher swing low. We got that higher swing low. We got that down close candle. Being a buy after here would be the best thing. But like I said, first week, I'll let it go. Right now, I'll let it go. But if I had to get the early jump on it, if I had to go against my own idea, I would be going long here. I would be looking to have my stop loss below this swing low here. Or at this, at or literally at the swing low. No point. And looking for a one to one. Or I'm looking for some type of buy side to the to the upside. And that could be that 60 day high. It honestly can be. This market can move, man. Look at all this. Look at all this that it has to fill back in. And I said this earlier on. I don't know if anybody remembers or anybody that's here. Reclaimed order blocks, right? Look at this last up close candle that price fell away from. Price probably later in the future is going to reclaim that order block. Let's draw that a little cleaner. Right here. Look into it. It's a, it's a it's a PD array, right? Reclaim this order block. Price might come back into that up close candle. Same thing up here. There's another one up here after this sell. Might want to reclaim where they where they had that major selling. Now they're gonna buy it back. They're gonna buy back into that where, where they had the major selling. Right after that up candle, and they engulfed it or whatever, right? And they sold it off. They're going to try and reclaim the orders. And I mentioned this with UJ. I was trying to get a jump on this earlier, but I figured that it was – I didn't know how soon it was going to happen, but I was like, I know sooner or later it's going to happen again because you can't beat the fundamentals, dog. You just can't. To, unless the Bank of Japan is confident and they're going to say and they voice their opinion, right? They're going to come out and say, yes, we're going to hike rates. The market's going to price it in. Investors are going to be like, oh, they're going to hike rates? Okay, let's jump back into the yen. Let's sell everything out. Because that's the potential. But if they don't have the signs of, of, of hiking rates again, investors are going to be like, you know what? All right, yen, you're not really talking a big game anymore. These banks are still, they're cutting. Yes, these banks are still cutting, but they still have a higher rate than you. So what's the argument? Why should I bank with you? There's no argument. So that's why these yen crosses, I truly do believe it's going to push back up, continue this bullish leg. Other than that, I ain't got much to say. Keep it simple. Don't overanalyze this month. And let's see if we can catch another swing trade. Again, if it's a bullish trend, buying after a down close day is your best friend. That's how I caught all my swing trades this year. Buying after a down day. Using a buy stop order or sell sell limit order or a buy stop order. That's what I've been using. This one. Look at that. Deontay did what? He brought after a down day. I didn't do much. I kept it very simple. GJ did the same thing. What did I do? I brought after a down day. I didn't care about intraday. It's the whole thing. If you're a swing trader or you're gonna put you're gonna play your your put yourself in that position and play that role. You can't start taking like an intraday trader. You just can't. The two are definitely not the same metric. Swing trader. we The swing trader does not care about the kill zones, bro. You're a swing trader. Why are you worrying about London, New York, and Asian session? You shouldn't be. Unless you're an intraday trader and you're playing that role at that time, right? I change roles. Sometimes I'll, I'll play the intraday trader role. But more times than not, my default is going to be swing trading. Because it's more hands off. I don't have to sit here every day, come in, oh, what's the setup for kill zones? Oh, what's the setup for the kill zone? Oh, it did this. I don't have to do that all the time. I sit back. Life is busy. My life is busy. That, that's, that's just me speaking, right? I, I want a swing trade. 
it puts a it keeps a lot more stress off me. Set it, forget it. I'm gone. Risk two percent. Hold. If I get any more than that, oh my gosh, great. We could compound two percent a month. Great. Just twelve months out of the year. What is the recommended stop loss for a swing trade? This is a great question, fam. That's a great question. It all depends on your closest swing point. So, for example, this here. This was, bruh, this is almost 350 pips. That's a huge trade for the gain of seven, six and change. Incredible. What a trade, bro. Oh, my gosh. 700 and something pips, bro. On People don't see this often, bro. But it all depends on your closest swing point. So I put mine just below this swing point. I was very cautious. I really thought this was going to get raided that month. I was like, dang, if it breaks this swing point here, odds are it's going to continue going lower. I would have collapsed the trade. Go back and listen to those daily updates. I said that. I was like, if it gets here, probably not going to hold the trade for the rest of the month. I'm probably going to get out. But it held on Monday, turned around again. Look, it made a higher. It just failed. <laughs> Bro. Market maker gods held that one down. Just failed to break that low, bro. Ooh. And turned it around, turned it around one more time. One, two, three, three bars again. Pushed it back up. I was like, thank the Lord, man. Thank the market gods for that one. We needed that. All depends on your closest stop loss. See, I was, and when I set up this trade parameter, I said, okay, I would like to go with this one. And I was like, nah, this is too much. I can't take this. I could not take a 700 pip, 600 plus pip stop loss. That was too much. So I had to cut that, cut that down. Almost nearly half. So I would say anywhere from your closest swing low, you're going to sit from a ballpark of 150 pips to 350 pips. Anything more than that, you're pushing it. The market's going to go in that direction. Again, 150 pips to 350 pips. Anything more than that, you're pushing it. That's your swing trade or position trade, right? Held that position. And technically, this position would still be profitable if I was still holding it. I'm not. Got out of it, paid the trade, I'm done. These are unrealized gains at this point. That's what you say. People could say, oh, you could have held the trade longer. I could have, but I don't know if it's really going to necessarily continue going up. Let me just get out where I'm comfortable, and I'm happy with that. So if there's any other questions, guys, this will be it. Heading into next week, we're going to be doing our daily updates with NJ. We're going to take it day by day again, right? All those small, subtle cues that we see on the daily chart, we're going to talk about that. All those ideas and ideologies from Larry Williams to ICT, we're going to talk about that via daily chart. And, yeah, we're going to get after it again. You know, safe trading this month. Do what's best for you. Don't look at the next man's chart. You got this. You got this, you got this, you got this. I'll give you guys a second. If there's no other questions, I'm going to head into my weekend and try and relax now. It's been a pleasure, as always. You too, fam. Enjoy. Be safe. Good night, good night, good night. All right. See you guys next week. The real trading begins.